We're continuing the sermon series on deep thoughts. And so my topic today is on the power of the resurrection. So be prepared for some deep thoughts because <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting when I get to thinking about that power and what the resurrection did and reading scripture and, and thinking about what we think in this world is power. If you go to school, the prevailing theory of how this whole universe um, interacts with each other and came to be the way it is now, the, what they will teach you is the theory of the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory is what they'll teach you in school now. And it's this idea that at one point there was, there was this one spot in all of everything that there ever was in the universe, a spot that had all of the mass, all of the matter, um, all of the energy and light and heat, and it was in one little itty bitty spot, all very dense, and then all of a sudden it just exploded. And since then, it explains how the universe and the m different solar systems and the planets have all started to expand out from each other and develop and, and how it's continuing to expand. Now what it explains is how, what it tries to explain is how the universe kind of acts since that moment of the Big Bang. What that theory does not explain, and if you ask scientists, they'll just be quiet on the whole matter, is, well, if this is the theory, where did all that come from in the first place? The Big Bang Theory does not explain that at all. They have no clue. Science doesn't explain it. And here's where the big deep thoughts comes from as I get to thinking about it. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not knowing um, how this all worked, with not having an understanding. And surprise, I'm also kind of okay with them teaching it in school. And for a couple of reasons. I think that the very first reason is when I was in high school, my science teacher, when he was teaching us about the theory of evolution, and the first thing he said is, this is a theory because we weren't there. <laughs> we have no idea. We didn't have photographers then. Um, we didn't have records of those things. We have no idea. And so to come up and to do the scientific research is okay, but we don't know if that's the way it happened or not. We can't say. We don't have that in our power to be able to say, yes, this is how the universe all came to be. And then he said that you might have a different theory or a different idea or a different faith of how it all came to be, of how creation was created. And he said, I do. And that's okay. And now we're going to learn about evolution, but it's okay if you have a different faith. And my science teacher was so faithful, he made sure we were at church on Wednesday nights during Lent, and we were out of sports practice on time. I mean, his life was just that he made it okay to learn about science, but he made it okay to know who created everything. The Lord God. I'm okay with that. I think for another couple of reasons is that there's this other idea in science that nothing comes from nothing. So even if you start to go back and start to theorize and have an idea of the Big Bang Theory, that you can't, it doesn't even make any sense to say that all of a sudden there's all this matter, but nobody has any clue where it came from and, and where did all of this come from? And scientists are just quiet on the whole thing and they won't even talk about it. But I think that the biggest reason why I'm okay with all of this, with the not knowing and with it being taught is, is that God tells us that I don't have to wonder. Is that I look in, in scripture, in the stories of creation, not only in the Old Testament, in Genesis, but also in the Gospel of John, first chapter, when we hear, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. God tells us what happened at the beginning. Even though we weren't there, we didn't get to take pictures, so God tells us this is what happened. He tells us how it happened. He says first was the separating of the stars and the, and the sky and the earth and, and he separated the waters from the land and he put sea creatures in and he created 
birds of the air and animals on the land and then he said it was good all the plants and he said it was good and then he created man and he said it was very good he tells us the order and most importantly he tells us I did it it was me God says I did it I created you so you don't have to wonder you don't have to question and if you do, that's okay, because when you can't find the answers out in science, God still says, I did it. He, he had all this power. And then what's amazing, he, gets, he gave us just a little bit of power here on earth. When he created man and said, you're very good. Now here, name all of the animals. Take care of my creation. And we, unfortunately... And our sinful selves abuse that power time and time again. But here we are. You know, power, I was thinking of this deep thoughts idea and power. Power changes stuff from one thing to another, especially in two different ways. The power can build something. If you have a little bit of power, a little bit of money, a little bit of time and energy, you could build something. You could build a building. You could start a business and build a business. You could start a family and build your family and your home life. But power can not only build stuff, it can also destroy. And it takes a lot less to destroy with a little bit of power. I mean, just a flicker of, of a spark of fire and a whole building can be burned in an hour. And with the wrong word or the wrong action, then a relationship that you've built for years and years can just be destroyed in an instant. That's the power that we can have here on this earth. You know, whole political campaigns are run on the premise of change. If you vote me in and give me the power, then there will be change. Of course, don't necessarily get told what kind of change is that going to be. Is that going to be building up or is that going to be destroying? But there is power in that. There is a lot that can happen to change. When Christ died on the cross, when the Son of God came to this world and he was arrested and crucified and died, he gave up his power. He gave up his popularity. Nobody was going to listen to him now. He gave up his friendships. All of his friends turned away. And they weren't there with him anymore when he died. They said, I don't even know this man. He gave up all of his power. He was humiliated. And then in three days, when God raised Christ from the dead... The power of that day was so great that it changed everything in heaven and on earth and all of science in all of logic. The power of the resurrection changed our whole way of thinking of how things work in this world in our lives. When Christ overcame even death. You know, before this moment, before the resurrection the world knew God only as this God of law, this God of vengeance, this God that you needed to do something for God in order to get something out that you needed to sacrifice of yourself or act the right way. That's what people understood God to be. And so then Jesus comes, and before he dies, he's with his disciples, he's teaching them, and he's telling them things that they don't understand yet. They don't get it yet. And he says, before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you, you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. They didn't get this yet. Jesus said, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, 